Thanks, Chef AJ. Happy New Year. It's good to be back here on the show, heart to heart, and welcome. I think I can still say Happy New Year. It's We're 21 days in. Can you believe it? That 2024, we're already 21 days in. Well, Columbus Batiste here. I am so excited to uh, reconnect with you in this 2024 year and wanted to share with you some things that I've been thinking about and so forth as we start this new year. And one of the things my patients are always, always kind of talking about is they're always talking about really, truly this idea of making something I think most Americans make, which are New Year's resolutions, <laughs> right? And, you know, I have the good privilege of working inside of what's called a cardiac rehabilitation program. And so one of the things that I do as part of my daily job, besides um, trying to stop heart attacks in their throats by advising on nutrition and exercise and lifestyle. We also formalize that into a program that Dean Ornish really has done tremendous work in called cardiac rehabilitation, looking at all the components of nutrition and stress reduction, exercise, um, and adjustment of medications as well. And so when individuals start on this, it's typically after an event, after a heart attack, but in the context of the general society, we know that everyone likes to start things if it's not the first of a month, uh, sometimes it's after an event, sometimes it's in preparation for a major life event like uh, a wedding or so forth. But we also know it happens around January 1st. This idea, this fresh start that happens that people are seem to be somehow more likely to tackle good and important things at the start of a day, a week, or a month, a new year. Now, how many of you all out there made New Year's resolutions? Uh, how many of you out there decide that you were going to do something, uh, save more money, lose more weight, eat uh, a whole food plant-based diet, limiting salt and sugar and, and some of the untowards of, of fats and so forth out there. This is one of the things that many, many people do. And, and this phenomenon is really is attributed to this psychological association of, of sort of a new beginning. And this isn't new to just right now in the 21st century. This goes back, even the ancient Romans. It, it's the reason why we call our month January is based off of the Roman god Janus uh, that had two faces, one that was looking forward towards a fresh start or new beginnings and one looking back in the past. And so the idea is that it's an opportunity uh, to leave past failures behind and start anew. And so this is not, it's not surprising that we all go down this road. The problem is, the problem is that we can't sustain it. Uh, it seems as if we can't sustain it. And that's why I said, don't make your New Year's resolution until you really watch this show. Uh, even though I'm a cardiologist, I'm not a psychologist, I take care of patients on a regular basis and deal with the 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 challenges individuals face with trying to make changes in their daily life and so studies have shown that only nine to to, to twelve percent that's roughly about ten percent really sustain their new year's resolution changes and so that's really a daunting statistic when we say that 90 percent of people will not succeed so the question really is why why is it that people give up is, is it that they lose motivation is it that they somehow are too busy now i've been accused of, of saying that myself you know when i'm i'm working out my trainer says to me hey doc you know have you been hitting your mark what you've been doing i was like man how's it going I said, I'm, I'm kind of busy. You know, I had long cases. I'm preparing for a lecture. I, I, I get the opportunity to sit before a wonderful crowd um, and, and on Chef AJ's show, various things, working with my kids. And so being busy is a fact of life. Uh, or perhaps you shifted your goal that now your focus has changed or or that there's other reasons that come into play. But there's many reasons or excuses that we give for not completing or sticking to the task of our challenges. So, you know, it begs the question really, truly is why don't they work? Why don't resolutions work? Why don't changes work irrespective of coming out of a heart attack or deciding that you want to make a New Year's resolution? Why are they not working for you? Why is it? And I want to pr uh, pretend to you today, I really believe one of the main reasons why individuals are not successful, whether it's 2024 or 1904, is because we're focused on the goal. We're focused on the end product. We're focused on the finish line as opposed to what is our plan. We're saying to ourselves, 
uh, I'm going to eat a whole food plant-based diet. I'm going to eat healthier. But the real question is, what's our plan? How are we going to go about it? Let's get into the process. You know, I'm a sports guy. And so there's a team out there called the, the Philadelphia 76ers. They're not my team. My team is the Los Angeles Lakers. I am a sports guy. And so, but the Philadelphia 76ers always said, they went by this mantra, their general manager said, trust the process. Don't look at the goal. Don't look at it. Don't look at the, don't focus on the goal right now, but let's focus on the process. Trust the process. And so I want to tell you today that trusting the process, part of that process, that plan is a mindset. It's a mindset. What's your mindset going into this, this new year's? What's your mindset as you look to adopt a whole food plant-based diet? Is your mindset that you can do it? Because like Henry Ford said, and he's not the first, this is a quote inside the Bible. King Solomon said something very similar, but whether you think you can or think you can't, guess what? You're right. You're right. Your mindset plays such a considerable role in your outcomes, your belief. Uh, there's one belief cycle concept says that, that the amount of belief you have determines the amount of potential you can tap into, but then it goes on further. The potential, the amount of potential you tap into determines the amount of action you can take. And the, the amount of action that you take determines the results you produce and the results then feed into your belief. That means small successes add up to greater confidence, which then leads to a greater belief that you can succeed, that leads to greater potential in you succeeding in, in implementing those actions. The mindset is so powerful for you as you look into going into 2024. Uh, even if you stumbled thus far into these, 20, these, these first three weeks, you don't have to stop. I want you to reset, and we're going to work on it today in terms of reestablishing what is your plan to adopt a healthier lifestyle. So you don't have to see me. When we look at this, this growth mindset and rewiring it, it reminds me so much more of the placebo effect we talk about inside of, uh, of medicine. Uh, you've heard of this placebo effect where we give a sugar pill. Uh, but here's the thing. If you believe it will work, it will. But if you believe it won't work, it won't. That's really what the placebo effect is about. It's about belief. It's about belief. And so whether or not it's a pill or a procedure that a doctor or provider gives you, you're all of a sudden, your belief plays a significant role. Here's the thing. We gauge everything in medicine off this concept of placebo. We're testing what, what is placebo. We typically will provide you with, it's a, uh, an inactive substance that we're comparing to uh, some sort of therapy that we feel is beneficial some sort of medicinal product, some sort of pharmaceutical agent. And what we're saying is that this newly discovered pharmaceutical agent has to outwork, outperform your belief for us to even consider that it's beneficial to you. Uh, because we understand the power of belief of mindset into transforming and impacting everything from your pain all the way through. Are you, you guys may be looking at me a little bit funny that, hey, does he know what he's talking about? I'm going to say there's some tremendous work done by my psychology colleagues um, going dating back to the, to the early 2000s and even further back, Aaliyah Crum uh, out of Stanford and former prior to that out of Harvard uh, performed wonderful work. And so this study here is so interesting that that's here I want to present to you today. And this, what she did in this study is that she looked at house workers, our cleaners inside the hospital, we call them uh, environmental safety, EVS systems, that, and said by merely performing 44, informing 44 hotel maids that their daily activities constituted exercise. They were thinking that it wasn't. This is just work. It's not exercise. Harvard psychologist Ellen Langer and student Aaliyah Crum at that time seemingly achieved a reduction in the women's blood pressure, lowering their, bo their body weight, improving their body fat uh, composition and waist to hip ratio. Right. So what that means is that they just told them didn't change anything about their activity, their daily steps, what they did, their diet. They just said, guess what you're doing is you're actually exercising. They put this into their mind. And so at the start of the study, uh, what the, the researchers did is they, they quizzed 84 maids at seven different places, right, about how much exercise they got. And a third of the women, like most of us, said they, they got no exercise at all, while two-thirds said that they didn't work out at all. 
Now, so what they do is they took these measurements uh, on the fitness levels and, and so forth, and they indicate that, yes, indeed, they had poor health and that they were basically sedentary. They didn't do much. Then just over uh, uh, half of the women were told the unfamiliar truth, right? They, they told the truth that cleaning 15 rooms a day, pushing uh, uh, vacuum cleaners and scrubbing tubs and pulling sheets. Now, I would pretend to you that is actually exercise. When you're getting down and you're squatting, when you're pushing, that's just the same thing as going to the gym. You're active and getting those steps. But they're saying this constitutes more than enough activity to meet the Surgeon General's recommendations of a half an hour of physical activity uh, per day. Now, I do this inside of my cardiac rehabilitation program. And the researchers provide specifics even. They even kind of told them that, hey, here's so many calories you're going to burn by doing this activity or that activity. And this was extremely beneficial. They also uh, post inside the lounges that, hey, you're doing fitness through your housework, just like what the image shows there. And as a reminder to them, now a month later, just one month, the researchers checked back with the women and found out as when they reported this inside of psychological uh, science and their, their, uh, their uh, uh, research, the average study group made had lost two pounds over, two month, over one month, while the blood pressure dropped 10 points which pretends to tremendous health benefits. Um, by all measures, the 44 women were significantly healthier, yet there were no reported changes in behavior, only in the mindset. If you think you can, you're right. If you think you can, you're right. Uh, and, and the vast majority of women now consider themselves regular exercisers, but they didn't stop there. Uh, Dr. Aliyah Crumb, she she went on and started looking at, well, what about my perception if I'm looking at a certain food in my perception? And so, and we've all done this, right? We all understand that that our mindset plays a role on it. Our body conspires to keep us from from living our our best life at times. What I mean, what do I mean by that? Well, what happens when you sit down and watch a television show or a movie if for years you've always gone in and you have gotten a tub of popcorn? Uh, your mind's going to say, well, you know what? I have to get popcorn. What happens when you come home and, and you're given as a small child, when you cry a donut or a cookie, you think that I need to have this uh, to comfort myself, that you, you equate situations with your desire to eat that happens on a regular basis. And so, and we look at certain labels of foods and things of that nature. So this study was very, very interesting for multiple reasons because it tapped into the physiology. And so Crump, they ripped up these batch of milkshakes and labeled them as either health desserts uh, shakes or, or dessert shakes. Now we get this, right? Because that's almost what's been done inside of the, the, the standpoint of these smoothies. I put ice cream and all this stuff, nuts and, and chocolate inside there. And you think, oh, I'm having a healthy smoothie bowl. You're really just having dessert, right? And, and the shakes were, were identical. They were only labeled differently. But in this particular research, same exact type of components of the shake. Uh, they just changed the label to give the different perception. People in the study drink one of the shakes while the other, the researchers monitored the level of ghrelin. Now, ghrelin is that hunger hormone. I always remember it, grrr, right? your stomach growls, right? And so that ghrelin hormone, it's 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 made by your stomach. It sends out the signals, advice telling us to eat. Um, it can be affected by lack of sleep. That's why we get the munchies the longer we stay up. That's why one of the many reasons why sleep is so vital towards your health and your efforts. It not only does lack of sleep raise stress hormones, it also in, uh, uh, it also alters your ability of, for diabetes too as well and high blood pressure. And so they looked at this level of ghrelin, getting back to ghrelin, called the hunger hormone, and they found that ghrelin levels rise when you haven't eaten in a while uh, to signal that you should go find food. And so ghrelin drops after eating to signal that uh, it's time for your body to digest food, saying that you've had a nice, well-rounded uh, or at least um, uh, uh, calorie-rich uh, meal that's there. And so what they found is that ghrelin levels dropped about three times more when people thought they were consuming the higher calorie food. So just the mindset of believing that this food is denser, it's going to be more satisfying to me, actually reduced the ghrelin hormone. 
You have to understand that your mind plays such a powerful role in everything and that labels are not just labels, they evoke a set of beliefs. And so this even extends to cardiology. And so as a cardiologist, one of the things I told you about pills, we'll compare one pill to the other, but researchers years ago took it to another level. So many of you may know I'm an interventional cardiologist, which is my job means I was technically trained to go in into arteries when patients were having the throes of a heart attack and try and stop that from happening. Right. And so by the process of doing that, we place wires down the vessel, balloons and these wire meshes called stents to prop the vessel open. So in that instance, that therapy can indeed be life saving and is necessary in the elective setting where someone is asymptomatic. That's where the question arises. Am I better suited by going down lifestyle, by having um, aggressive nutrition, which has been shown to not only stall the progression of coronary artery disease, but to alleviate symptoms of chest discomfort and as as powerful a tool as we have. I was just saying the table, a little bit of backdrop that's there. So in this particular study, they weren't looking at plant-based nutrition. They were just saying, hey, you know what? Let's see if the mindset changes. Let's see if the belief that a stent has been placed and we're going to trick patients. They're going to go through the initial procedure, but no stent is going to be placed in one group and stents are going to be placed in the other. Now, here's what's interesting. They, they, they treated the group that didn't have stents with medications, but didn't do aggressive nutrition and lifestyle and everything else. And they still showed, here's the thing, they still showed that individuals who were randomized towards the pills, even though they had the procedure, but did not know it, and the other group that had the stents and were given pills, the stent, they were comparable. There was no improvement of significance in the exercise that was demonstrated um, in this first Orbita trial. And so that was a powerful statement really about the power of the mindset. Once again, gave both into groups uh, a procedure, but in the midst of the procedure, one group got a stent because you can't tell if you're having a stent when you're having the procedure called an angiogram. You don't know at that time, most individuals do not know. And so, but they were told they had a stent. They just didn't know which one. And both were going in afterwards and were given medications. But the group that didn't have a stent but stayed on meds did comparably or about the same as a group that had a stent and had the medications in terms of their exercise or activity. And so it told us about the power of, of the, the mindset. But also maybe it told us about the fact that the, the, the stents were not tremendously uh, effective and more beneficial than taking a less aggressive approach. And every situation is different. So I do want you to understand every situation is different for, uh, for individuals. But this study speaks not only to the power of mindset. It also talks about whether or not there is tremendous benefit in terms of some of our therapies. So overall conclusion of the Orbiter trial was that in patients with stable angina, so I'm not, not talking about heart attack patients, there really was no additional benefit of placing stents over a placebo procedure in terms of exercise measures like exercise time. So we gets us back to the question and the point, why is it that New Year's resolutions are so abysmal in outcomes? Why don't they, they succeed? Why do they fail? And so how can we really flip the script? How can we do it? You know, in this new year, let's not make the same resolution next year that we're going to we're going to be healthier in our nutrition, that we're not going to slip up, that we're not going to that we're going to try and lose weight. Let's be intentional this year. How can we do it? Well, I believe the first key, just like in real estate, uh, they say the rules of real estate. I'm not a real estate agent. I have some friends that are that are the, the, the keys to real estate are location, location, location. I say the keys to success are planning, planning, planning. We have to plan. Failing to plan is planning to fail. You've heard that old adage before. We have to plan, right? The devil is in the details and that's what's key. And I want to tell you, I'm old school now. I'm old school. We have to put pen to paper. I know many of you have like your iPhones and you have your, your Samsung phones and you have all the Androids, all these different devices, these pads, the computers. I want to pretend to you today, put pen to paper, get that, that feeling of writing down right in this moment. And it, it, it says have shown that it helps you to picture your goals. And this in turn makes you up to 40% more likely than someone who didn't write anything down. We have to write down our thoughts. Uh, and so that's one of the things I do first thing in the morning. 
get up and we'll talk about this a bit more, but I try to outline what are the, my action items for the day. Now, when I don't do that, and I'm like everyone else, some days I don't, I'm less productive. I'm less efficient. I'm more inclined to kind of fall back into old habits. And one of the, the, the concepts of really trying to, to transform our planning is to uh, adapt a process called implementation intention implementation intention. And so let me give you an example, perfect one I have here. Let's say it says, I'm going to work out today. I'm going to work out more often. That's my New Year's resolution. I'm going to work out more often. Well, okay. When they when, when researchers looked at individuals who said, they just said an arbitrary idea of what they're going to do versus those who are very specific. Uh, they said, uh, I'm going to train from this time to this time on which days and for and so forth. This is what was more successful. That when I will train from six to seven on Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays, those individuals were more successful. But not just that. Here's what I will do on Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays, and for how long? I will do X, Y, and Z at at X time and day um, in this particular place. But here's the key: if this happens, then I will do what? What's my contention plan? Right. And so as we become very intentional, when we carry this over to food, we can't just say, I'm going to eat more green leafy vegetables. Uh, I, I'm going to eat healthier. I'm going to eat more fruit. Uh, I'm going to eat, you know, I'm going to eat more grains. No. What type of green leafy vegetables are you going to eat? Is it going to be kale? Is it going to be spinach? Is it going to be bok choy? Is it going to be arugula? Um, are you going to eat green leaf lettuce, red leaf lettuce? Are you are you going to have mustard greens, collard greens? Uh, uh, what are you going to do? What kind of fruit are you going to have? Is it in season, out of season? Are you going to have berries, blueberries, raspberries, strawberries? Oh, I love those. Power power packed right for your heart. Am I going to have red beans, black beans, pintos, uh, chickpeas? What I'm going? What specifically am I going to do? Now, how am I going to eat it? When am I going to have that? I, uh, what am I going to have for breakfast, lunch, and dinner? What time am I going to eat it? How will I prepare it? Is it going to be frozen? Is it something I'm going to cook in a crock pot or the pressure cooker? Or is it something I'm going to have in the oven? What? How am I going to do this and achieve it? Right? And this is implementation intention. But I want to take it another step further. What I like to do and what I advise is that we do pre-mortem planning. Now, pre-mortem planning is something, a business concept. Now, and so what this reply implies is the fact that in medicine, we understand that when a person has a disease state and they unfortunately pass away, it's only during the autopsy that we dig in and we find out what's going on is the, and how things could have changed, but it's too late to affect that patient. Maybe we can affect the next patient, but so that's post-mortem, right? That's post-mortem aut autopsy. But how about before the death of, of an individual? How about the before the death of an event or uh, an action item or a plan or a project, what happens if we identify these risk factors before? And so what pre-mortem planning is, I want to identify every challenge, every situation that is going to kill my plan. I advise patients, kill your plan. You say you're going to eat whole food plant-based. You say you're going to follow Chef AJ's approach. You say you're going to eat more fruits, vegetables, whole grains, beans, legumes, nuts, and seeds. All right, kill the plan now. What happens when you're tired? Uh, what happens when you haven't had a chance to go grocery shopping? What's going to happen when you are inside of, uh, 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 of an environment, a potluck, a restaurant where you have nothing to eat? What's your plan going to be then? Right. So now once you've identified these challenges, these pitfalls, these barriers, these landmines, now we're going to begin the process of solving for it. Let's solve for it. So I'm tired. I haven't had a chance to go grocery shopping. Okay, I'm going to use Instacart. I'm going to have my I'm gonna have my food ordered and delivered to me. Uh, you know, I haven't had a chance to eat. Okay, I'm going to identify, are there areas that can create my food with the way I'm trying to eat, with the dietary approach I'm trying to take that has more robustness of fruits and vegetables and whole grains without like the sauces and, and frying and everything of that sort? Can I do it? Can I make sure I have the plan? And now once you do this on a daily basis, not once, just January 1st and you stop, but we're going to do this and revise it every week. I woke up late. 
I didn't get my workout in. What's my plan if I wake up late and I don't get my workout in? Okay, you know what? I'm going to sneak it in either here between these meetings or at the end of the day before I walk in the house, I'm going to the gym. What's going to happen if I need to make sure I can get a chance to pack my lunch? Okay, I identified a couple of locations, either a grocery store, I'm going to get a bag of salad, I'm going to get uh, some salsa that's there, that's fun, pico de gallo that's there. I'm going to go ahead and, and get a can of, of, of beans that are there. I'm going to get some vegetables that are frozen that are there. I'm going to, I didn't bring a bowl, so I'm going to bring a bowl, I'm going to warm it up in the microwave, and I'm going to add these things together, and boom, I got myself a meal. Right. I'm going to start thinking through what is the process that I'm going to undertake to make sure I'm as successful as possible. Because guess what? You have to just do it if you want to be successful. You have to just do it if you want to be successful. This is this and amongst many other things is what I outlined in my new book upcoming entitled Selfish. Selfish, a cure for a stressed and broken heart. It's what we're looking at. And so when I look at selfish, it's an acronym, stands for spiritual exercise, love, food, intimacy, sleep, and humor. And the wonderful part is that the first two letters, spiritual and exercise, they really are what can be characterized as foundational components. Many of what we're talking about here, these to, to, to build on habits that can help you be successful inside of your new year's resolutions that when we look at this because they tap into different aspects of your of your of your mind this is why they're successful this is why keystone habits and foundational uh components are extremely helpful one area in particular has come to prominence over the past five to 10 years. It's called the anterior uh, mid cingulate cortex. And there's evidence that suggests that, that motivation and persistence, which is what we need to achieve our goals, uh, they may be linked to the function of the anterior uh, mid cingulate cortex. And they could be related to this idea of tenacity this drive that keeps you going despite all that adversity, uh, this aspect of behavior with individuals with strong willpower. They, they, they exhibit this persistence in pursuing their goal. And that's really what we need to be successful, don't we? So this one, this interesting study that was done um, years ago, years ago, actually. Um, and this is why I love science. I love science. What they did was they, they were looking at some different factors and they looked at aerobic training. Right. And they found that it increases the brain volume as we get older. So what they did. And so in 2006, the investigation, they looked at individuals from the ages of 60 to 79. Who says you can't treat you? You can't teach an old dog new tricks. Right. I don't believe that at any age is about the amount of effort you put into it. And so one group of participants participated in this aerobic exercise while the other group engaged in calisthenics and stretching. Now, there's nothing wrong with calisthenics and stretching. It's actually beneficial for your body and for your heart too as well. But you can imagine the amount of effort that it takes to, to engage inside of aerobic exercise. Who You don't want to do it. You don't want to challenge and stress yourself like that, right? And you're sore the next day. But they did this. They forced these, They put these individuals and classified them this way. After adhering to this prescribed regimen, right? That included three weekly sessions lasting one hour, one hour, right? Not 30 minutes, not 15 minutes of moderate intensity aerobic exercise. The individuals inside this group demonstrate maintenance of, and even the possibility of an increase in the size of their anterior mid cingulate cortex. This is the area that scientists have begun to see is associated with this tenacity, hashtag tenacity. That's our goal for this upcoming year, hashtag tenacity. We want to be tenacious in our efforts to achieve what we deserve. I want to tell you that you deserve all the help that you're looking to get. You deserve your best life. And that's what this is about, that the, the, the other aspect of, of selfish, so that's the E in selfish, exercise, is one of the most powerful tools that helps build this keystone habit that helps you achieve your goals in a domino effect in a stepwise fashion that's there. So as you're going down this road, there are certain things that are going to help support you to be successful in your journey to achieve your New Year's resolutions. The other one, I told you there's two, the spiritual and the exercise. What studies have shown is that meditation and prayer, 
uh, right mindfulness, uh, breathing, that these things activate the prefrontal cortex. This is where it gives us insight. This is where it gives us emotional regulation, where we're, we're able to kind of stabilize ourselves instead of swinging towards like the hunger and I have to, I have to have this candy bar or this, whatever our, our thing is. It gives us this concentration that we're able to, to focus. But here's the thing. It also modulates and decreases the activity of the, the amygdala, the limbic system, the area that drives us out of fear that's there. So when we combine exercise and then we combine that exercise inside of the green space, outdoor activity where we're getting vitamin D, we're getting sunlight in measured amounts. We're also uh, forest bathing and decreasing our stress hormones on top of the meditation and prayer. That focus, uh, uh, that focus, that power, that belief inside of, of, of God and a higher power that we know can be beneficial. That all of a sudden, when we combine these things together, we're now setting ourselves up to be successful in our health journey, to eat healthier, to sleep better, to move along this, this pathway towards the best version of ourselves. Uh, we have to go ahead and get selfish. We have to go ahead and, ahead and get selfish. That This is why I wanted to stop by today and tell you, we're not going to take too long here. The thing is that you cannot let yourself, this is not my quote, right? But I loved it when I stumbled upon this. You can't let yourself fail just because the people around you aren't ready to succeed. Sometimes you have to be selfish. I don't mean selfish in a bad way. I mean selfish to live a life of purpose. That's what I talk about in my book right? Spiritual exercise, love, food, intimacy, sleep, and humor of how these things play a role in transforming the body, of transforming the heart, that transform, alleviate stress, and can help you achieve the goals that you need to because you want to get selfish, not for self, but so you can live a life of purpose. What are you going to do once you achieve your health, uh, right? That's really the question. So we see what, what Chef AJ has done, right? She's now decided that she's set as her commitment. She wants to help others. Uh, so, so your goal is it, when you're done and you achieve your goal, what else is there? And so that's also my goal. And so I wish you much success in this upcoming year. Remember, even if you've stumbled in these first 21 days, don't give up. You deserve it. You deserve this and so much more. I want you to focus Implement, implementation intention, write down your goals. You will do what, at what particular time, for how long. I want you to be very uh, uh, pre-mortem planning. Fill your plan. Solve for all of the, the, the issues that may arise. And, and another feature I didn't throw in here is be smart with it. Be specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-based in your assessment. Do a stacked approach for your, your goals as you implement this. In, and guess what? Maintain your community. Stay here. I want you to subscribe. Follow me at Healthy Heart Doc. I want you to, to, to check out my website, drbatiste.com. Continue to follow Chef AJ. And listen, look forward to seeing you again uh, soon. We're going to catch you out uh, next, next time here. I'll be back next month. And next month, guess what? Is my favorite month. We're talking about Heart Health Month. Every month is Heart Health Month. But February is intentional. Guess why? Uh, I'm a cardiologist. It's a cardi I'm a cardiologist. This is a month dedicated to talking about women's health, heart health, talking about heart health in general for men and women and combined with Black African American History Month. Right. So look, I look forward to seeing you next time. Stay well and we will see you all soon.